So hello everybody, welcome on the next Open Virtualization Pro webinar. Um, I'm happy to have Jaroslav Stakuni again with me. Uh, and Jarek again, the OpenShift subject, but right now we change a little bit uh, the title and we today will speak much more about the developers part, yes? So we have exactly, some yeah. what's new in OpenShift for. So we we starting a new new few parts talking about how OpenShift can leverage and help developers uh, to work in a daily basis. What I see, we have a new developer toolset. Uh, so what do you have today for us, my friend? Yeah, I think first we will start with short introductions of ourselves. So uh, my name is uh, Jarosław. I'm a solution architect. I work for over six years at Red Hat. I'm focusing mostly on uh, OpenShift uh, container platform as well as all the developer oriented uh, products and solutions at Red Hat, mainly um, JBoss middleware uh, portfolio. I work in, in Red Hat in Central Eastern Europe. Okay, uh, myself and my name is Pavel Monchka. I'm one of the founders of the Stower company. Uh, we are really focusing on the data protection. You know, we, we're saying surfing every, every combination, Clive, hybrid on-prem. We also have some idea how to protect the container spot, but it will be, it's not the main subject for today. I will start just with short recap of what OpenShift is. Um, so, uh, so OpenShift is basically the container applications lifetime uh, or lifecycle management solution. So uh, with OpenShift, you can uh, build your application uh, as a container or, or set of containers, and then you can deploy uh, this application and, and manage it lifecycle um, until until it will be retired. So it it is based, on, of course, on the Kubernetes, which is pretty much uh, a standard for containers orchestration. It includes also a Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system. Uh, with new version, it's, uh, uh, it also includes RHEL Core OS, which is our uh, lightweight version of, of RHEL. And then on top of Kubernetes, we add all the tools that uh, both administrators and developer, developers might need to build and, and, and monitor and manage the, the applications. And today we will focus on this uh, uh, right top uh, side uh, corner, um, actually a subset of those tools. Uh, so we start today kind of short uh, series of uh, containing or consisting two parts. So today we will, I will talk more about the tools for developers and the second part will be more focused on, uh, on the tools that are helpful to manage the life cycle of, uh, of the um, containerized uh, applications. Uh, so the topic for today, we have, we have four, uh, I would like to, to show you and, and introduce to you four uh, different tools. Uh, first one is the new web console, uh, which you can leverage to, you know, to manage your applications on the uh, via web browser. Uh, second one is Odoo, which is a command line that created specifically for developers to to help you quickly uh, build and deploy your applications into OpenShift. Uh, third one is. Uh, uh, code ready containers, which is uh, kind of a single box local uh, OpenShift installation that you can deploy locally on your desktop or laptop. And the last one is uh, code ready workspaces, which is a uh, um, development environment uh, which runs entirely on OpenShift and uh, which you can use to code and uh, build and deploy your applications into uh, OpenShift. Um, so the first uh, first tool is uh, Web Console. Um, so uh, Web Console uh, has uh, now dedicated developer perspective. So 
uh, we have um, kind of selected and limited uh, the number of uh, informations that uh, uh, e e developer needs to access via web console. So uh, you will see it, uh, we, we created a new uh, perspective uh, where you can specifically work on your uh, projects and applications inside those projects. Um, uh, there is also a new uh, application topology view uh, where uh, basically you can um, access all the components uh, that your application uh, contains. So, um, as you know, in uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes world, the, uh, even one single container will consist number of uh, objects like uh, deployments, services, routes, uh, some some config map, and so on, and all those components can be accessed uh, in this uh, uh, from this uh, topology. Uh, so now I will quickly um, quickly show you how this uh, how this tool looks like. Uh, in the, yes, in the like world. always, we we need to have a live demo, not on the slides. So I'm glad to have. To have this yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I will, I will show you all those four tools, of course, very shortly. But, uh, but yeah, you can see them live. Uh, so here you can see my, uh, my, my OpenShift uh, web console. Those two perspectives. So, so currently I'm logged in as a developer, but I, I have uh, the administrator uh, perspective open, and now I'm switching to, uh, to the developer console. Um, it takes me to, to, to the most recent project I have been using. Uh, so here you can see on the top, and, it, and, and you see already the topology of, of, uh, of the applications that are deployed in this project. So you can see here we have a uh, not very big application which contains like five uh, different pods. So uh, as you remember, pods can uh, pods are running containers. So uh, there could be one or more containers running in the pod. Uh, in our case, uh, actually, I think all of them, they, they run just one containers each. Uh, so we can hear uh, when we click on this, uh, the, um, the circle, they are called donuts, just like the, the, the cakes. Uh, so when you click on the donut, you can see... You just, you uh, just grab the donuts, <laughs> like a policeman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, when you click on it, you can see the details of all the um, components that that uh, that are related to that uh, specific pod. Um, so if we go uh, actually here into resources, you can see we have a, a the pod running. There is a service which exposes two ports uh, from this uh, pod, and then there is a, a route that uh, exposes the service uh, to to our public. A network, and then we can go deep, deeper uh, into our pod. Uh, we can see what kind of resources this pod is uh, currently consuming, the, all the history of, of the resources utilization. We have access to uh, to the logs uh, of our pod. Uh, we can open the terminal session here and um, call some comments. So, for example, you can see my. Uh, user ID and uh, the user ID of uh, which which runs the process here in this pod. So uh, everything handy uh, at your uh, on your hands. Uh, of course, you can do some play with this uh, with this topology. You can uh, like here group some pods uh, which belongs to the same service or application into into the group so that you can better visualize. Uh, what is going on? Yeah, I understand, uh, um, understand the argument that if we have, let's say, a big environment, we can go drill down from the topology perspective into the specific uh, pod, into the specific actually container and application. Yeah, yeah of course, that's uh, mm -hmm. that's exactly how it works here. Um, uh, you can also uh, here quite easily add a new new component into your project. So, for example. Uh, if you have some application template already created, so you can see here, uh, I have a library of uh, quite a lot, over 100 different uh, application um, templates. Uh, I can select one um, and then 
uh, create a or uh, in, in, instantiate the, the application that uh, that has been uh, described in this uh, template. So I have here a lot of different parameters um, that, that that I like, I would need to fill in to to instantiate that that application. So it's as you can see, it's all uh, about developer and application uh, without you know any going any deeply into the 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 operational part of the uh, of the application. All right. So uh, as I promised, this uh, this is these are quick demos. So uh, we are uh, we have to move forward. Um, so the second uh, the second component here is Odoo, uh, which is uh, OpenShift uh, developer oriented command line interface. Uh, so the the idea behind this uh, uh, behind this command line is to really uh, provide uh, the the developer experience, which is similar to to what typically developer are, are doing with uh, with JIT source code um, on platform. So uh, you can see here some familiar comments that uh, you, you probably know from uh, if you are using JIT uh, as a as your source code. Uh, environment uh, and actually here also I would like to show you how this uh, uh, works um, so uh, let me quickly start with uh, with some quick uh, clone of um, uh, of my um, uh, demo application this is this is very very simple uh, node.js application um, so the first, uh, the first thing we we have to do here is we need to create a project. Um, actually, I have to remember the the order of the comments. So we create a project called um, Node JS Demo. Uh, actually, let's see here on the web console, uh, which is here. Uh, there is no this project here on the list. You see, uh, I don't have it. So now let's create one. Uh, and now um, we will uh, initiate the uh, Node.js um, uh, builder, which which will basically create for us uh, from the source code uh, running uh, pod, which will uh, have inside the uh, Node.js runtime container. So for that we need to um yeah we need to initiate the node.js uh, builder um i will do here one more thing so i will create a, a route for uh for our application so that it will be immediately available uh from uh, my public network uh yeah you will create um we keep your default values and then we can call auto push uh, just like in JIT. And our application uh, deployment has started. So let's come back here. We have a project already. And here you can see Donut, which is empty at the moment. But now it starts to fill in uh, with the color. And you can see here that the, the, the pod uh, has been built. And uh, now it, it's, it is starting. Uh, it should be quite fast. So now, now it's it's running. Uh, there is also a, a check, a liveness check done by the platform uh, before uh, it will be uh, it will become available. But yeah, you can see here now uh, the application has responded to us. So we have created quickly our application, and if we come back to the command line, we can see now that. Um, application has been uh, deployed um, the same pretty much the same way we can now um, we can now uh, delete um, our project so uh, we have a auto auto project uh, sub comment and then we just uh, have to add the delete and the name of the project which is node js 
So the goal, the goal, Yarek, is to do not let's say exchanging, going and you know switch between the UI, so we can we can do everything. Uh, like yeah, this is you know if, the command line, so it's even faster to do for for the developers to to work with the projects itself. In, exactly, this is typically how developer prefer to to work with the uh, with with you know with the platform. So. Um, mm -hmm. They they just push code and they, they they run some tests and so on. So uh, this is how you can do it also with this uh, with this old tool. And here you can see that this project uh, is already gone. I mean uh, you can see it's here, but if I refresh change to other project, you can see it it is gone. So we have quickly created and and remove the the, the application from uh yes. from few, few question here it's it's any on the open shift side it, let's say i'm creating a project can i add some description or some priority that nobody will delete it it's it depends of the let's say roles of the developer so i'm looking for yes, this so, uh, yeah so for, for each project for each project you create you you you, you, you can you can define uh, roles uh, of of some users for some users so by default the user who creates the project like i just created it has the admin rights in the project so he can also delete the project but uh, once your project is is created uh, we can actually try to to, to check it quickly uh, in the in the web console but we need to switch to administrator um, perspective uh, <clears throat> we can have a look here <coughs> sorry for example uh, a project uh, within one project we have some some roles defined there are okay. quite a lot of those roles but but only a few of them some are important so for example uh, for example the admin uh, we can list uh, what what are you know the the low level permissions for the role and then we have role binding. So here we can see that in this project, I have just admin user, uh, which is a uh, developer user. So only one user with one role. And, and we can, of course, create more. So we can here create some new bindings in the project. So it's you can do it the same with, with command line, of course. OK, nice. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, so this is uh, this is about the uh about the odo uh the third tool is code ready container so <coughs> code ready containers uh is a kind of replacement for uh for for similar tools which are uh, which were available in in openshift uh 3 so we used to have tools like minishift uh, container development kit and and also there was a command uh, oc cluster app that Allowed you to spin up uh, uh, OpenShift uh, um, instance on your um, on your box. So for OpenShift four, we created a new tool called Code Ready Containers. Uh, so again, the, the the main goal here uh, is to, uh, to to give uh, very easy to use uh, and set up tool. So what you have to do here, uh, we need, you need to uh, download the, the, the CRC binary, uh, so one single file, um, and then uh, once you uh, once you um, once you run it, uh, uh, first you, you run command CRC setup, set like you can see here, you set up your uh, machine. So uh, when you run it, it will basically um, uh, spin up a virtual machine uh, on your box. So in my case, uh, I have here running uh, CRC. So uh, it is uh, it is just regular uh, virtual machine that runs on top of my uh, local KVM uh, virtual virtual um, machine. Um, the same way you can do it on other operating systems. So you can see here Windows and Mac. Um, and once you, you set up it, um, so there is also some networking setup that is done in your machine. Uh, you can you can you have one more command just to start it to start the instance, and it will start for you uh, the um, the full, let's say fully functional OpenShift cluster running on your local environment. So we can call here. Um, 
the uh, status command you can see that it is running on my machine what kind of resources it consumes and uh, uh, you can also for example uh, ssh to that machine uh, so there is a uh, there is a possibility there is a uh, ssh key created that you can use to, to ssh to that machine uh, you have uh, you can all you can use all the tools uh, that i have shown you uh, also all openshift client tools and uh, basically uh, you can see what i'm doing here uh, uh, on this demo is, is really uh, I'm, I'm using exactly this uh, this this CRC instance running on my uh, on my laptop, so uh, you can see here that there is a uh, dot testing command which uh, a domain which is created uh, locally on my machine by the uh, CRC installer, and uh, that's how I can access it also via uh, via the the local uh, network. Uh, so it's pretty pretty cool. Um, it requires like eight gigs of RAM, um, some four CPUs, two CPUs should be also fine, and you can run the cluster um, pre-configured with everything you need to just just run your applications uh, in in OpenShift. And this is something that really is is uh, is quite a new thing. So. Uh, you can see here it's still public beta, but uh, when OpenShift 4.2 will be released, you will you will have it um, available uh, with full support. Uh, also, I, I didn't mention that the web console, the new web console I, I was showing you uh, a few minutes ago, is also a new feature in OpenShift 4.2. So, um, so you need to wait for probably a few days uh, from now to. To, to have it uh, fully supported, or you can try uh, the beta uh, if if you if you don't want to wait. Uh, all right. So um, the last uh, 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 the last uh, uh, tool I wanted to show you today is uh, Code Ready Workspaces. So Code Ready Workspaces in is a development environment. Uh, so we are just about to, re to release version two, but uh, we have already uh, available version one, so uh, you can use it. So the idea behind uh, Code Ready Workspaces is really to uh, to offer to give you uh, a development environment that you can run easily um, uh, from uh, as part of your OpenShift uh, cluster and uh, all the development coding uh, you will be doing will be done via uh, web browser uh, plugin so um, let me quickly show you how this uh, how this plugin look like um, so this is my uh, this is my code ready workspaces ide um, i'm running this instance also on my uh, code ready container so on, on this local um, uh, OpenShift um, uh, environment. Um, so here you can see we have an editor. Um, let me just quickly start uh, an application here. So uh, here we have a Java application. So we have a Maven project. So I'm calling Maven to, to start the project. Here on the bottom you can see uh, the Java is starting. It starts uh, uh, in, in OpenShift, uh, inside the um, the, the, the IDE um, port, so uh, everything is fully containerized. So it's it's running. I can see here the uh, the link to the root, which is created for me. Uh, yeah, sometimes we have to wait a while, but now you can see uh, the app is running. So uh, it gives us hello world. And now let's make a quick. Uh, Quick uh, coding, very quick. So just I will add here uh, OVP. Um, it should be rebuilt dynamically. So you can see on the bottom, uh, Spring Boot has restarted. And now let's call it again. And you can see here uh, the new version of our app uh, has been started. So as you can see, you can work very eff effectively and efficiently with this. Um, with this tool, what you can also do here. You need to 
did you need to commit anything? Just enter the string and that's all? So everything is doing... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's all done uh, here locally. So, uh, of course, if you, in, in enterprise environment, you will at some point commit your code to your, uh, you know, uh, corporate Git repo. But here, you, uh, while you are just coding, uh, you can enable uh, just, you know, auto save and, and it will dynamically um, restart your instance, the instance of your application and, and you can quickly test it. Uh, another nice uh, uh, functionality here uh, is uh, dependency analysis, built-in dependency analysis. So uh, you can use that functionality to verify uh, what kind of licenses uh, or uh, libraries that might have some uh, vulnerabilities uh, are used by your application. So uh, this tool is is doing some um, some analysis of the libraries based on based based on you know your your Maven configuration, and it gives you here some feedback about uh, what libraries are used, what are the licenses. So my project is very simple. So I have just information that. There are some uh, open source licenses, uh, so no no issues here. But uh, it would also detect if if you use some some old version of the library which has known uh, security vulnerability, or if there is some uh, commercial license issue that that uh, or requirement uh, for uh, for this um, for this application for, for for the specific library. And then once once uh, uh, you are done, uh, because we have to be very quickly here, we can also uh, deploy this application as a, a container to our OpenShift environment. So um, again, we have a, a Maven plugin here, which uh, which will do that. And now we can uh, we can have a look on OpenShift again web console. Uh, so we are in the right project here. You can see. Uh, actually, you cannot see here much, but uh, in a minute you should see that there will be a new uh, a new version of the of the pod running. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so it's still uh, no. This 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 pro process is is a bit longer than all the others, but you can see here the uh, the build process here is uh, uh, has started. So. First, it needs to build your Java code and, and so compile your Java code and then it creates an image. So here you can see uh, it creates some, some image and uh, hopefully in a few seconds uh, the image will be pushed to, uh, to the um, Docker registry, which is part of our uh, OpenShift uh, uh, cluster. Uh, so this is happening now. and. Uh, and then this will uh, this should automatically uh, init uh, the deployment of uh, of the new version. So uh, I will leave it uh, as it is. We will maybe come back to this uh, in a in a minute. Okay. Uh, there's there is one more thing here I wanted to show you. So uh, if if you if you don't like or you don't feel confident with uh, with using uh, with using this uh, 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 container native IDI environment, uh, we we are also quite uh, heavily uh, supporting uh, Visual Studio Code um, um, development environment. So uh, we have built uh, a lot of plugins that uh, gives you very similar experience. Uh, with uh, OpenShift uh, from from this uh, from this development environment, so this is also uh, a very good option for you if if you would like to uh, to try. Um, maybe let's come back now and see. Okay, so here you can see um, there is no pod at the moment, so the donut is empty. So now oh, we, you can see we catch now the moment when uh, when the new uh, version. Uh, is being deployed. So here the process has finished uh, from the IDI point of view, but now uh, the, the, the new pod is starting. So this time we run Java, so it's a bit a bit longer than uh, than typically. We can have a look on the logs if there are already any. Um, you know, it's it's like on this dry joke. 
When somebody yeah, no. in the door, you waiting. No, oh, but see, we have a lock, so Java, Java is starting. <laughs> starting. We can, we can. Uh, let's come back to the topology and just quickly look on the. Uh, here you can see, yeah. So our OVP uh, Hello World version has been deployed uh, to OpenShift. So we make it in <laughs> 30 minutes. Um, yeah, so uh, if if this is uh, if you find this interesting, uh, those tools, uh, there are two uh, two links uh, I wanted to share with you. Uh, so first one, learn.openshift.com, is where you can take some um, some uh, labs, uh, so hands-on labs. Uh, it's based on the uh, on the Katakoda platform, so uh, it gives you nice uh, experience. Uh, real just like you would work with the uh, real platform. Uh, if you want to try to install uh, either code-ready containers or a new OpenShift 4.2, uh, uh, which is still a beta for, for hopefully not, not long time, or you want to try the fully supported 4.1, uh, uh, you should go to try.openshift.com where you can download all the software and all the tools uh, that, uh, that I have briefly shown you uh, today. So that's that's all from my side. So this concludes our uh, part one, so the, the, the introduction to, to developer uh, toolset. Uh, and uh, I hope we will see on the part two with, where I will introduce some more uh, for model tools and solutions for uh, application um, delivery um, or lifecycle management. Okay, so that was, you know, like always, we are we are on we are in time, so it, it's yeah. it's great. You said it's you know to take long as a Java. I didn't I didn't finalize my joke. I think mo most of you know it, but somebody knocking to the door, you you can bite the door and says who's there, you waiting for a long time about the thirty seconds and you hear Java. So, uh, but. <laughs> But today, I think the, the Java may, 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 may made a good time. So uh, definitely was great to see all of the four small demos. Uh, this is what I said. Yeah, and, and actually, and actually in, in, in part two of, uh, of, our, uh, of our series, I would like to show you uh, uh, Quarkus, which should even improve the, the, the time of, uh, you know, uh, building and deploying uh, Java applications. So this is also something I will address in the, the, the second. Okay, uh, so stay part. tuned to, to, to the next part uh, with Jarek and myself. Uh, so right now I will stop recording. So we'll finish the uh, official, um, uh, official um, let's say presentation and demo. We'll grab some QA session, but after I will stop, I will stop recording. So. Uh, thank you for watching us. Please go on openvirtualization.pro, subscribe the newsletter, and please join one of our next webinars with our experts. So thank you. And right now we'll go in a QA session. Thank you.